after having understood what my position vectors are and what my displacement is let us try to discuss how we find out velocity in for a particle which is moving in a plane right so so we come to the concept of of velocity right let me move this now what is velocity exactly we have said that velocity is is nothing but velocity is is nothing but but displacement upon time right displacement upon time correct now this was fine when we were dealing with motion in a straight line and it was all a scalar quantity okay so so now what happens the velocity since my displacement is a vector right my velocity also becomes a vector it it can be said to be 1 upon t this is a this is a 1 upon t t is a scalar 1 upon t is also a scalar so it can be said to be a scalar multiplication of 1 1 upon t by the displacement vector right and whenever you multiply a vector by a scalar which is positive the resultant vector is in the same direction as the initial vector that is delta r so the direction of the velocity is the same as that of delta r so direction of velocity is the same as that of delta r right that means it is same as that of the the displacement vector as the displacement vector right fine now now the time time here the time that we had taken was was delta t right so in effect i can write it as i can write the whole thing as and v beam delta r upon delta t we get the point delta r upon delta t and since this is this time interval is finite this is nothing but the average velocity okay this is nothing but the average velocity now as we had discussed earlier for 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 a particle which has say a trajectory like this between p and q okay or or say say like this between p and q or say say something like this between p and q my delta r vector remains the same for the same time interval Is it not? Suppose, suppose a, a body takes either path one or, or let us say path two, or let us say path path three, okay, path three or or say path four, 
my my delta r in, in the same time interval delta t my delta r vector remains the same and at these these four trajectories are materially different correct and that is one of the disadvantages of the average velocity whatever happens in between that time interval is not known to me you get the point whatever happens between the time interval is not known to me hence i am not at all satisfied by the average velocity rather i would like to have something called an instantaneous velocity right we want to have something called instantaneous velocity so so we want to have we we want to have instantaneous velocity instantaneous velocity and the reason being reason being between the time since between delta t whatever happens whatever happens is is beyond our knowledge okay now how do we get the instantaneous velocity because for there to be a displacement there has to be two points understand we cannot do 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 that we can we, we cannot we are not in a position to collapse the time interval to zero we cannot do that why because then computation of velocity actually requires a displacement vector it requires a time interval correct and if we do not have that if we do not have that we will not be able to compute the velocity okay so 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 we come to the conclusion that we need to have a time interval okay we do need to have a time interval so we need to have a time interval and still i want no information to escape me okay and still want all the information and still want all the information so so what do we do so what do we do we try to collapse the time interval to a very 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 small value okay therefore we want to collapse therefore we want to collapse the time interval to a very very small value to a very very small value but how small okay but how small that that is the question you right how small how small will 10 to the power 6 seconds suffice looks to be pretty small a time interval but if you start coming in nanoseconds there are 1000 nanoseconds there are 1000 nanoseconds in one microsecond this is a microsecond right so how small okay it seems smaller we become there is still a smaller time interval available no so even if you have say 10 to the power minus 578 seconds there is a time interval like 10 to the power minus 1000 second which is pretty pretty smaller than this is it not so what do we do so we say that the time interval that we'll be using will be infinitesimally slow 
the time interval that we are will be using will be infinitesimally small okay so 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 delta t should be infinitesimally small what do we mean by that infinitesimally small what do we mean by that it means that it should be smaller than should be smaller than the smallest that we can even imagine that we can even imagine right and how do i denote it okay because because now if i say 10 to the power minus 1 billion it will become less than that so how do i represent it we represent it by represented by delta t tending to 0 okay this is represented by the the symbol tending to 0 we understand we first of all understand the need to have an instantaneous velocity because between an interval whatever is happening is absolutely lost to us right then we understand the constraint of having a time interval we cannot collapse it to zero because because then we won't know what's the change in position and until or unless there is a change in position we do not know what the displacement is and if you do not know the displacement you do not know the velocity it's as simple as that right so we do need a time interval but we need a small one how small so we have gone to the end of imagination anything that you can write on the copy it is smaller than that okay so so we say that instantaneous velocity instantaneous velocity velocity is limit delta t tending to zero delta r upon delta t do we understand what 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 it means It is limit delta t tending to 0, delta r upon delta t. Okay. Okay. And whenever this, this quantity tends to 0, we tend to denote it by what d r upon dt okay that that obviates that that excludes the need to be writing all this paraphernalia right so you write dr upon dt one automatically comes to understand that it was del r upon del t where del t del t has tended to zero and due to that, you have this is something called instantaneous velocity, right? So, so, so dr upon dt is nothing but limit delta t tending to zero, delta r upon delta t. which is nothing but limit delta t tending to 0 what is my delta r do we remember my delta r had come out to be 
delta x i cap plus delta y j cap right it is still there i have continued from the last one this my delta r is nothing but okay so my delta r is nothing but but this I'm sorry. It is this. Okay. So it is nothing but delta x i cap plus delta y j cap upon delta t which is nothing but limit delta t tending to 0 delta x upon delta t i cap right plus delta y upon delta t j cap which is nothing but limit delta t tending to 0 delta x upon delta t i cap plus limit delta t tending to 0 delta y upon delta t j cap right and we have seen wherever this goes to this becomes delta t tending to 0 this becomes the instantaneous value and it can be very simply written as dx upon dt i cap plus dy upon dt j cap. You understand so this instantaneous velocity thing dr upon dg is nothing but two vectors comprised of of dx when when delta x when it's when it's change in x coordinates tends to zero when it when the time tends to zero whatever is the change in the x coordinate upon that time interval and whenever delta t tends to 0, the change in the y coordinate upon the time interval, right? And, and hence, this is the expression for, for instantaneous velocity, right? Now, what happens is, this is denoted as v this okay this this dr upon dt is the instantaneous velocity right that is equal to dx upon dt is what this is the velocity along the the component of velocity along the x axis so we tend to designate it by vx okay in the component form plus v y j cap V dx upon dt is the vx and dy upon dt is the vy. 
Do we get that? Now, what does it mean? Let's, let, let's come back to that figure. Okay. Now let me let me remove this this chaos that has been built around that, or maybe maybe let me copy it and paste it somewhere else. Okay. So let me copy it. paste it somewhere else so so let it be here right now I'll try to remove whatever I've built around it. So these these extra parts that we have built, I do not want them. Right? You also do not require these components, right? So they're gone, gone, gone. So, so this is the simple thing that we had in the beginning. This is this is nothing but p with coordinates this this is r right okay now what are we trying to say is this time interval in which it has come from here to here that should shrink right so so maybe the path to this trajectory fine that should shrink so let us say if i if i had a reduced time interval this could have been found somewhere here right it it would have been found somewhere here right it would have been that magenta tip and had that been the magenta tip the displacement vector would have looked like this do you see that okay fine now if if it was smaller let us say i i would have made it smaller what would have happened the tip would have been like that right like that and my my vector would have been this let me make it a bit thicker so that it is visible. Okay, so, so the vector would have been this. This small vector. Do we see that? This small vector would have been 
this this small vector taking u from here and and joining u somewhere here right so so this vector this now we see that as my time interval is is getting reduced you see this white vector was quite far away from the trajectory this greener vector came some bit closer to the trajectory this red vector has again become closer to, to the trajectory right so what happens in the limit if i have another vector which is extremely very very close to to this r1 vector and if i join both of them what happens to my velocity vector let us let us try to do that for that i am slightly undoing the last one right so what happens if i have i have another vector that is very 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 close to this right and i tend to join these two tips then what happens then what happens the new vector that i get right the the vector that i get by joining these tips will become tangential to the trajectory no it will become tangential to the trajectory we have been taught till now that tangent is a line that passes through through one point on the on the graph right actually that is so so if say this is something like that we are we have been told that a tangent is something that touches one point okay now we also know the euclid's geometry which says that through a point there can be infinite number of lines okay through a point there can be infinite number of lines so which of these are you talking about which of them out of those infinity which of them will be a tangent which one line will be a tangent now that is a very very cumbersome job right so so the definition that you were taught earlier that actually does not hold for for, for a tangent a tangent is actually a line that passes through two points through through two points on the curve so so not something like that it actually passes through two points on this curve which are extremely close to each other right so for example these two and and you try to join these that will be the tangent right that is what a tangent will be at this point because through two points if we have defined two points then we have a unique line again as per the euclid symmetry right so what have we done here too we have two very very two two very close points and and that is the direction of if i if i connect the first to the second okay so so let me kind of zoom it okay let us let me make a zoomed version of whatever is happening so so whatever is happening is maybe maybe this portion i am trying to zoom right so what has happened is is this was my trajectory i already had i already had a vector like that and this second infinitesimally close red vector that is somewhere very very close right so say very very close infinitesimally close so very 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 close like that so so there is one point here and there is another point here on the curve and and that is the direction of this is the direction of your r vector do you see that this small right this is your r vector delta r vector i'm sorry not r that is this is your delta r vector right 
and we have seen that my delta v is delta v is nothing but delta r multiplied by a positive constant so so the direction of delta v is in the same direction of delta r and delta r by whatever we have discussed till now the, this connects to extremely close points on this curve and hence it should be tangential to the curve so delta r which is tangential is in the same direction as delta r do we have our delta uh, do we have our instantaneous velocity so instantaneous velocity direction is the same so instantaneous velocity is like that so so what am i trying to say i am trying to now say that that the direction of of the velocity instantaneous velocity vector the direction of the instantaneous velocity vector velocity vector at all points is tangential to to the trajectory of the particle at all points this will happen at all points right at all points so at all points if someone asks you to find out the the direction of the velocity vector you just at that point draw a tangent to the curve right so so i have a curve like this so at this point if someone asks me to 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 show the velocity vector at this point it will be at this point it will be something like that so that it is tangent it, it, it's pretty thick hold on so so it will be it will be something like this tangential you see that here tangential you see that here tangential so at all points on the curve your velocity vector has to be tangential to the direction in which the particle is moving and i am talking about the instantaneous velocity vector right so if it is a circular motion so if it is a circular motion at all points say say if someone asks me at this point okay at this point at at this point my velocity vector will be tangential to that okay at this point my velocity vector will be tangential to the curve at this point my velocity vector is tangential to the curve right this point it is tangential to the curve and its length will determine the magnitude of the velocity how fast it is moving correct do we understand so so that is what we have to say about the velocity of a particle which is moving in a plane now one last thing before we wind this up if if we have our velocity vector like that what is the magnitude of that vector this is equal to what is the magnitude of the vector see if we have say a vector like that okay somewhere and it has two components so this is my v vector now this v vector has two components one of them is the vx vector right so 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 this is my vx vector 
this is my vx i cap right and this is my vj v v y j cap this is what it is right it's made up of two components one of them is vx vx in length another is vy in length and and this is like this now what happens what happens here what happens is vx multiplied by i cap has this length as as vx vy multiplied by j cap has this length as vy scalar multiplication this length is 1 this gets multiplied by vy so 1 into vy is vy this length is 1 multiplied by vx is vx so this is essentially a right triangle with with vx and vy as the, the base and the perpendicular so what is the length of this mod v is nothing but vx square plus vy square root over that right and what is the angle that it makes with the positive direction of x-axis this is after all the positive direction of x-axis so so this tan theta can be found out to be vy upon vx and applying the inverse trigonometric concept that 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 you'll be studying in class 12 inverse trigonometric functions that is vy upon vx theta is tan inverse vy upon vx Okay. So if I'm talking about this, okay, if I'm talking about this, okay, this velocity vector, this is actually made up of this as its, or, or let me use some other color, this as its Vx component and, and say, say this as its vy component right this is your vy component this is your vy component right this is this is my okay so so this is what we are calling as vx i cap right so this is what we are calling as as vx vector hold on This is my Vx I cap vector. And this is my Vy. J cap vector and, and this is the angle theta we are talking about right this angle this angle theta is what I was talking about right 